So today I am installing the vinyl flooring in my office. Now I apologize about the echo, but unfortunately I don't have any furniture in here yet. So, so you're going to hear a little bit of that on the video today. But that said, I want to talk about the pros and the cons of vinyl flooring. But here's the deal. You're thinking about redoing your basement, your kitchen, your dining room, living room, whatever. But you're trying to decide what type of flooring you want to go with. There's all kinds. You've got the hardwoods, you've got the tile, which I'm used to installing and I always really liked tile. But I decided to go a little different this time. So here's the deal people. If you were a subscriber, which I'm sure you are, you would already know that I am installing a brand new studio in the basement. Yep, we got the concrete floors, maybe a little dampness. So I didn't want to go tile because I was worried about it cracking. So I decided to go with the Pergo. They're real fancy like. They're basically like a vinyl and they're supposed to look like real wood. Now I pay $2.50 per square foot. There's a reason for that and I'll show you that here in a second. But I really think that this was the best bet for me down in the basement area where there's a lot of concrete. And again, it's just an office. It's not a real high traffic area. Now what I liked about the Pergo, the one I have right here, is that it comes with everything you need. It has the plastic wrap on the back so you don't have to worry about moisture. And you also have this sort of foam cushion on the back. So now I don't have to worry about going out and buying all that stuff. It'll be 100% protected and it comes right on the back of the plank. Now I paid a little bit extra for that protection on the back, but absolutely well worth it if you're putting this down on a concrete floor or in your basement. Now, if you don't want to spend $250 per square foot, you can go out and get your own subflooring and plastic and all that good stuff, but you definitely want to make sure that you put it down before you lay this stuff down. But why are we here? Well, I'm going to show you how this installs, right? And I'm going to talk about some of the pros and the cons about this that I can see right off the bat. This way, if you're deciding to go this route, which you probably are, and that's why you're here on this video, you'll have a better understanding of what you are getting into. Now, you can see I've already started installing some of this before the video. Now, you can see in the back, there's a couple spacers. We're going to talk about that here. So you're going to have to buy a couple other things, but they're pretty inexpensive. However, you are going to need spacers because you have to leave a quarter inch gap around your walls. If you don't add those spacers, you could end up with real issues down the road. Remember, this is a floating floor. It doesn't get held down by mortar or glue or anything. You're gonna need a couple other things as well. You're gonna need a pull bar right here and a tapping block and this sweet, sweet mallet. But you can buy all this in a kit. Literally ran me about $24, $25. So now it's time to install this stuff. What I do is take three boxes at a time. It'll even tell you to do that in the direction. The reason for that is because one batch might be a different color than the other batch and you sort of want to mix them up a little bit so it doesn't look weird. All right, so the first thing you're going to see when you open this up is you got a piece of wood, basically. Well, it looks like a piece of wood, but that's not really what you're getting. You're getting laminate, basically. That's what you find on your countertops. But what I noticed was it's a very thin laminate. This concerns me. I've never installed this stuff before and I always thought it was going to be a little bit thicker on top to take some abuse. But you can see here it's literally a sixteenth of an inch. But again on the back you can see it has everything you need to install so you don't need anything else but this. It just goes straight down on the floor. Look how graceful he is. He should have been put on the prices right years ago. I'm just saying he does a good job. Now quickly I'm going to show you how this thing goes together. A lot of these other DIY channels, well, they do a great job showing you how to install them. They just don't really talk about quality that much because, well, they're sponsored. This video is not. So right off the bat, super thin laminate. Not really excited about that. But again, we'll check it out. We'll see how it works. Now, one of the things that I want to make you aware of very quickly is these basically snap in, you tap them in, which I'll show you, and then they're supposed to hold in to each other. They're interlocking. It's a floating floor, so you're not you know, gluing these to the, the ground, you're not, you know, nailing them or anything like that, what you would do with, you know, real wood, you're not putting mud down like you would with tile. The problem with that is, with tile, at least you can, you know, measure something out, and if you need to fix something, or repair something, or adjust something, you can do that, cut it, and then grout it, mortar it, whatever you want to do. With this, you have to keep all four sides together, so if you run up against something like a post, for example, here, you cannot cut one of these sides because if you do, you won't have anything for the other one to attach to. And that's one of the issues for me. The only time you can cut a side is when it's going up against the wall. You're butting it up against the wall and that's the only time you cannot cut this. 
you know, shape it out or whatever, you have to keep all four sides. So it's, so you really have to make sure that when you're making your cuts, you are spot on. Cause if you mess up, there's no fixing this. There's no mudding this. Uh, you gotta get a new plank and that sucks. So the way this goes together is sort of like a double edged sword for me. They sort of like snap together almost. You gotta slide the edges in on each other and then you gotta tap them in. That makes it pretty fast and super clean. There's no mud, there's no water, nothing involved. That said, when you start getting into tighter spaces, well, that's where it gets a little tricky and quite annoying. Let me show you here. The first end is going to go into the last board that I put down, and then you sort of have to pull it out and then lift it up. You have to lift it and then tap it. Yep, that's right, that back end has to be facing downward a little bit, and that's where you get into those awkward positions. I wish they would just snap, but they don't. You have to tilt them up. And that's where your tapping block comes in. You're gonna have to hold it on the side like so, and instead of going straight in, which you'll never do, well, you do it like this. You lift up, and hopefully you can tap it. Now, the problem with this is, well, if you slip off, there's a good chance you're gonna damage your floor. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I damaged about four pieces this way. Now, just to show you, this is how easy it is to do that. Yeah, just like that. This is going to happen. So I would say buy a couple extra. And really, this is my main issue with this. It's so thin up on the top. If you hit it from the side at all, it, it really is sort of like, okay, you're going to bust the damn thing. But that being said, once you get them locked in, you have a little bit more protection. I don't think you have to worry about this. I'm just throwing this out there that, you know, you got to be careful when you're installing these. Yeah, that was my first board, by the way, but I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments from some people saying that this has never happened to them and it's always been perfect every single time that they went to install these. Now, we're going to put the top of this to the test here later in the video, but I'm telling you, a little bit weaker on the side when you go to tap them in, so be careful. Make sure that your tap block is held securely. The other thing I will tell you is once you get those secured in, you should be fine. No water leaking in there, no damage. I, I think you're going to be okay with it. So I say, let's just build the rest of the floor, see how it goes. Now, if you have a miter saw and you need to cut off end pieces, it works great, it cuts great on a miter saw. But if you only have something like a jigsaw, that is fine as well, but you're definitely going to need a saw for this type of flooring that we're using right now. You can't just use a utility knife, it's never going to work. All right, let's get it done. Now, once I got the hang of it, it just started flying. It was going plank after plank after plank. I felt untouchable. Nothing was going to get in my way of finishing this floor. I could not be stopped. Uh, all right, maybe a hot dog. But after that, I was ready to go. Now laying this floor I think is extremely easy. When you first start out, you're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna damage a couple, I'm, I'm sure of it. But once you figure it out, you are going to fly. Anybody can do this. It took me about four hours to lay this floor myself. And you're looking at about 250 square feet. Obviously the hardest thing is going to be around obstacles. I had a pillar around doors. You know, those are gonna be areas where you gotta be careful where to cut. But other than that, it is a really quick install floor and it's super, super clean. Meaning you only have a little bit of sawdust and that's really about it. And now that we got the floor installed, all I have to do is put my molding around it and then it's good to go. It's a floating floor. I don't have to worry about it moving on me once I get that held down by that base molding, but I am happy with the way it looks. It looks like real wood. It does not look fake. I, I'm pretty surprised. But what about damage? Here's the issue with this stuff. If you have a tile floor and you bust a piece of tile, you bust the rest of it out, you put a new piece of tile with some grout in and it's ready to go. But you can't really do that with this. So will it hold up to some abuse? Well, let's take some water here. And obviously the edges are not protected. So you might see some swelling there. However, when this is installed, you will not have any issues with water touching that. Could you mop this? Yeah, absolutely. I don't have any worries about water getting down inside those cracks or crevices or anything because they go in so tight. Again, you spill something on there, well, you just wipe it off and you're good to go. So I'm giving it a pass 
when it comes to dropping water or mopping or whatever, you're good to go with that. But what about durability? It's hammer time. My biggest concern about this flooring is durability. So I just dropped my hammer and you can see, well, it nicked up on top. Now I could probably take some type of stain or whatever and touch that up if I wanted to, but it's there. Now that's any floor, right? If you have a tile floor, it could crack. But my problem is this right here would be almost impossible to replace. I'm gonna drop it three more times and yeah, okay. So I got one mark, couple scuffs, not that big of a deal. Okay, I'm not sure if I give it a pass. Let's move it on to scuffs, right? So you're putting in new furniture and we got our two by four here. Okay, you're moving furniture around. Will it hold up to it? Well, let's check it out. Uh, oh. So will this hold up against furniture and moving things around? Yeah, absolutely. I think it actually does a really good job with that. So I don't have any worries there. So here's the thing. If you're planning on putting this stuff in, it's, it's pretty simple. It's not so forgiving. If you mess something up, you're gonna be irritated. You can't simply just take the messed up piece, trim it up and use it for something else. You're gonna have to toss it. But it's super quick to install. It's super clean and neat. Anybody can do it. it it's fast. I think it's great for basements. I think it's great for offices. Would I put it in a bathroom? No, absolutely not. I don't even know if I'd put this in my kitchen. That's just because it's such a high volume area. If you drop a cast iron pan on this thing, yeah, it's probably going to damage it. And it's, I don't even know how you would replace a plank unless you tear the whole section out. And I think that's my biggest issue with that, but you don't have to worry about it cracking if your concrete underneath it cracks. You don't have to worry about a lot of things like moisture. I just think it's a pretty good product if you use it in the right areas. Again, the bathroom, kitchen, I wouldn't use them in there everywhere else yeah i think you'll be fine so would i recommend this absolutely again anybody can do it it's a simple project and it looks really good that's my biggest thing it looks great it looks like real wood so i'm really happy with that so i want to know what you think have you installed this stuff before what do you like about it what don't you like about it are you thinking about installing it leave me a comment in the comment section below i always love hearing your feedback if you like this video for it helped you in any sort of way please don't forget to smash that like button as it is greatly appreciated if you like more videos like this get subscribed hit that bell notification i'll put a couple more right here for you to check out with that we'll be back with more videos soon